Radio Uganda News Hour is tonight hosting Major General Salim Saleh in a live phone in talk show on Red, Green, and Botevo channels. The live talk show will center on the just released parliamentary report on privatization, corruption in the country, the role of the military in politics, and any other fields in which Major General Salim Saleh has been active. Listeners are advised to ring telephone numbers 348 196 or 257 254. We shall uh, receive questions after about 15 minutes. I am your presenter, Samuel Mpimbaza Shaka, together with my co-presenter, Samuel Mwanguzi. Major General Salim Saleh, welcome to the studios tonight. And I think we should start with the basics. First of all, what are your real names? Yeah, my real names are Kareb Akandwano. Where does Salim Saleh come into the picture? This was a nickname I got during the fight against Tidi Amin. That is way back in 19 when? 19, from 1976 to 1979. Major General Salim Saleh, where were you born and when? They say I was born in Ntungamo on the 14th of January 1960. 1960, you must be about 38 years yes. old. Yep. Some four or five years older than I am. Major General Salim Saleh, I want to give I want you to give us a rundown on uh, on your brief. After being born in Intungamo, which school did you go to and when did you join the army? Well, I started schooling I think in Shwere. This is near Wachitora. And then Rushere Primary and then Mbarara Junior then Kako Primary, and then Kako Secondary. Kako Secondary School, this is which year? I think it was 1976, I think. And of course you never completed your olive as what well has been going on. No, I didn't. I, I, was, I stopped in S1. Then what happened? Then I went for holidays to visit my brother, and I never came back. I Who didn't. is this brother? People talk so much about your relationship with President Yoel Museven. How exactly are you related? I'm his youngest brother. His youngest brother. That means same father, same mother. Yes. That's very good. Now, listeners, we are hosting Major General Salim Saleh in this live talk show on News Hour on Radio Uganda. Major General Salim Saleh, you were a legendary name during the Bush days. What are your memories of the Bush days and what induced you to join the struggle against Amin and Obote? Well, I think against Amin, I was told that he's a bad guy. And at that time, I was too young to understand the difference. But when I read books about the dictators, I thought I should join other strugglists in fighting. Uh, yes, Major General Salim Saleh, 1986, I think you were promoted the rank of Major General. When you came out of the bush, that was your first rank, and it's still your rank up to now. Why do you think so? And why did you leave the service in 1989? Well, for being a major general for these years is not my really is not my problem. That depends on on my bosses, and uh, so I don't think I can answer that. Well, what do you think as a person were your exploits in the bush to to merit the rank of Major General? No, I don't think, you know, it's very difficult for me to say that I'm the only one who was fighting. But it's because we had very good strategies, we had a very good political program, we had uh, uh, very good military plans, all of us were successful, not me as an individual. But you are one of the major generals, of course. Yeah, I was. I happened to be the commander. Now, Major General Salim Saleh, after those years in the army, that stint, that successful stint in the army, you all of a sudden became a very household name in the economic sphere of the country. Where exactly, Major General Salim Saleh, did you generate this money that, you know, threw you into business and you became one of the big names that are talked over not only in Uganda but even in the region? Well, when I was uh, retired from active service, when I was put on Katebe, that is, I, I had to do something. 
yeah, and I was too, I was very young. I, I had a lot of contacts. Um, people say I use a lot of influence, but in my opinion, I use my goodwill. So I uh, different contacts and uh, things started shaping up. Not until I think I started doing business in 1990, but I think I started catching up with the big monies in 1991, 92 there. What was the magic behind this? Thinking. Thinking and planning. What exactly do you do in thinking and planning that quite a number of Ugandans don't do? I don't know. I don't know really. For me, when, if I get an offer, I analyze it and uh, make contact with different people and uh, it, it, I put the act together. Listeners, you are tuned to Radio Uganda News Hour. I'm now joined once again by my co-presenter Samuel Pimbaza Shaka to take the major journal from there. Thanks very much indeed, Mr. Mwanguzi, and we shall continue the program. Remember, as I told you earlier on, we shall entertain questions after about 15 minutes. Uh, now, Major General Salim Saleh, how many businesses do you have in Uganda? Uh, I don't know really, because I some of them I own alone, others I own with other people, so say, I don't know really how many I have, I can't tell you now. Not even approximately? There are quite many because I'm sometimes disorganized. I, uh, I, 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 I tend to, to touch on many things. Yes. What do you mean by many? Are they, could they be about 20, 30, 100? I think I was seeing the list, I think there are about 15 to 20 there. That's why actually I think now I have decided to sell all of them, create one entity that will be directed to into production. What is this entity you want to create? It's uh, an organization uh, called Divinity Union Limited, and uh, if I if I if I will be able to sell these things, I'll put all this money into this organization and uh, and manage a single entity instead of the twenty thirty uh, units, which are sometimes not profitable. Uh, how many businesses do you have outside the country? None, except shares on the t- on the on the Vancouver Stock Exchange. And what is that? These are shares belonging to Bank for Resources, the company that is uh, ex- planning to exploit Kirembe mines. What is the total worth of your businesses? I haven't yet uh, calculated that. You don't know how much you are worth, for instance? In assets or in cash? In terms of cash. cash? And of course assets are valued. Cash, I think I'm overdrawn. But assets, I don't know. I don't have the value yet. In terms of cash, I'm, I'm overdrawn in, in, in uh, a few banks. But what, including Greenland? Yes, including Greenland. Yeah, you, uh, Major General Salim Saleh, you are reported uh, involving in gold prospecting in Karamoja with a South African company. How far did this deal go? It, di- it fell through. It didn't work because, because of gold prices worldwide. We, dis- we found out that the prospective one was not going to be economically viable. Yeah, you. Uh, so we have suspended operations until the gold prices can be able to, to match up to the costs. But uh, were, or, were you already mining the gold in Karamoja? No, no. Uh, they, they, were just, they were just prospecting. Yeah, there were some reports that some gold was already being mined. And that there were some South African planes which were flying the gold there without even passing through customs. No, 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 you can check that. There, is, there was no possibility. And the local authorities in Karamoja also complained that when you abandoned the prospecting, you never told them that you are leaving. Is that true? No, I think they come. You know, I'm not involved in many of these companies. I started them and then they are managed by different people. But you remain the man at the top. Yeah. Uh, there were also reports that uh, you extended gold prospecting to the Democratic Republic of Congo where it is reported that Lieutenant Colonel Jetmo was a diet on your gold-buying mission. How far true is this? Yeah, it is true. It is true. He was going on a different mission, but he was in a company of some gold buyers. So it's not true that he was going to look for his brother? He was... Tr- maybe. It, it's possible that he was going to also saw his brother, but he has other. He had other official assignments. Yeah, and, and were these gold, uh, gold buyers uh, your business partners? Uh, some of them. 
Yeah, when did you become a director of the Greenland Investment Limited? I think this was in 1997, I think. And uh, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry. I I didn't. I became a director recently. Because at that time I was in active service in the north. I think in 1997. So I didn't become a director until until last month, I think. Why last month? Of uh, Greenland Investment. Yes. Why only last month? I, the, I was too busy in the north to be a director anyway. When this deal went through, the Uganda Green Milling deal, you were not a director of Greenland Investment Bank? No, I was a chairman of Caribs International. Is Caribs International one of the companies in Greenland Investment Bank? Yeah, what we did is that uh, I got the, I competed for the bid from the privatization unit. I had a, a fair price. It was offered to me. I didn't have enough capital. And then I engineered the, the finances. I think that's what you have been trying financial to ask Financial engineering. <laughs> Come again. And what, then, is, what is this financial so engineering? Listen, listen. So, and then I had to invite other people. This is what financial engineering is all about. Yes. It's about financial and human resources, merging them together. And then you, you, you get a product. So I did that with the fellow Ugandans in Greenland Investments, and uh, we made it. Can you talk about how many privatized companies have been bought by Greenland Investment with you as a shareholder? I think only one. One and then this one that is, that is the subject of today. Uh, UCB. This we are UCB. getting to that one in the next few minutes. <laughs> yeah. Let's continue. Which is that one you are talking about? Uh, <laughs> UGMC, Uganda Green Meeting. Yes. Mm. Uh, now, what does Bank of Uganda's intervention into Greenland Bank mean to Greenland Investment Limited? Uh, what, do you, what? Uh, what does uh, Bank of Uganda's intervention mm. into Greenland Bank mean to uh, the Greenland Investments Limited? No, they can't. They can't interfere in Greenland Investments. But they have made an intervention. No, they are making an that intervention. That is Greenland Bank. These are two different entities. Yes, but uh, as uh, one of the directors of Greenland Investment, mm. you are the owners of Greenland Bank, not so. No. No, no, no. This is a different entity altogether. You are saying Greenland Investment has no shares in Greenland Bank? No. How different or how related are they? These are two different companies. We thought Greenland Investment was a holding company. No, not for Greenland Bank. So you are not a shareholder of Greenland Bank? No. You are not even a board of the directors? No. Mm -hmm. Now, can you tell us how you developed interest into the, into the Uganda Commercial Bank? You see, I spent two years in the north. I was looking at why problems in the north were occurring. I drew up a program for rural finance in 1997, and I will leave you a copy if you want. Yes. And uh, I started that foundation. I took it to the donors. The donors just laughed at me and said, well, this is, uh, how can you present this and that? So my original intention of trying to acquire UCB was to give me capacity to finance rural credit schemes that I have very well documented with me here. So we carried out a feasibility study of how we could improve the situation in the north, and we, and we, we, uh, that's why I said to, to go into that venture to help me, and I review the, the, the statement here. Yeah, maybe uh, listeners, we are hosting Major General Salim Saleh, and uh, in the next few minutes uh, we shall start entertaining questions uh, to Major General Salim Saleh. Uh, Major General, can you tell us why uh, you thought it was your moral right to mm -hmm. act improperly to buy Uganda Commercial Bank, reportedly to protect interests of uh, ordinary Ugandans? You know, for me, U UCB is, is I, I still hold this view, that UCB should not have gone to anybody else. If it was necessary, we should have called on all Ugandans to contribute 10 shillings each, and we keep this bank ours. Had you paid for UCB, mm. had you already paid for UCB to Westmond? What do you mean? What I mean is that Westmond bought Uganda Commercial Bank. Yes. Then you turned around and bought their shares from them, but told them to wait until the, the contract agreement by the privatization unit. Had you already paid 
Westmont any money? Or are you going to suffer any financial loss now that you pulled out your personal interests? I, I will leave that question to the managing director of Greenland Investments because that's the company that is involved there. And you know, until recently, I, di- I didn't, uh, I, I was not on the board of Greenland Investments. But for me, what I did was to organize, organize the transaction and uh, and uh, the, the 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 company i mean the green and investments will have to give the 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 schedule of payments and all that and the agreements and because so on. the report just issued today by the parliamentary committee on privatization implicates you very very strongly mm. into the malpractices of shady buying of uganda commercial bank limited mm. and they are saying they are going to ask parliament mm to investigate you, arrest you, and prosecute you for having got involved in a shady deal, despite the fact that you apologized for the impropriate. Yeah, but I will not be the first person to go to jail. So if they deem it fit, I am ready. There is no problem. And, and because that is, uh, it is you, Dr. Sulaiman Chigundu, and a host of other foreign names. That's fine with me. Who are going to problem. be prosecuted? Actually, you are supposed to be arrested immediately. For what? For having involved yourself in for doing property. For doing business or what? <laughs> for having involved yourself in a shady deal of buying Uganda what, what commercial is, What is shoddy about that? That there was the, the whole of the privatization process has been veiled with a lot of corruption and therefore they are choosing you as the agent Mm. Of corruption, especially yeah. as manifested by your involvement in Uganda <laughs> Commercial Bank. That is why I have written, even myself, I'm so confused about corruption. Yes. That's why I, I have done it, some limited research about corruption. Mm. And in the next few days, I'm going to publish a booklet. And the title is What is Corruption? Because I don't understand it myself. Now, if you buy a, an enterprise, and people say you are corrupt. I don't understand the, sen- uh, the essence of that. My only regret on the UCB thing is that I disobeyed my commanding chief. That's the only regret. As I was about attempting to buy it, I don't have any regret. The, 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 the committee of parliament looks at it differently. That's the, they are entitled to that. It says your confession about impropriety mm. is not an excuse mm. for not being prosecuted. Mm. And they are going ahead. They are, they are requesting parliament to allow them hire an international crime agency to investigate you. And more time also to to investigate how privatization funds are being used. So mm. you, are, you are in a few there is going to be a subject of an international investigation. That's fair. That's fair. As long as I will be protected by the law, I don't have any problem. Yeah, <clears throat> you have said you disobeyed your command and chief in the purchase of UCB. What mm. do you mean by this? He categorically told me not to get involved. But uh, Major General Salim Saleh, there has always been a lot of talk that you are fronting for your brother, that you are doing business on his own behalf, Many papers have written this, and uh, can you come out clean on this one? I will be wasting my time, because people will not believe it. Mm. So I don't have to answer that one. But what is the actual but position? What is the actual position? The actual position is that I don't do business for him. He hates me doing business. Yeah. I said it earlier that he's, he has been an obstacle in my doing business. So, how can you be an obstacle and then a shareholder? Do in this case, he told me categorically not to get involved in UCB. Because I thought it was too big anyway. So I, I consulted him and he told me categorically don't get involved. Do you feel sorry? Do you feel sorry that the parliamentary committee has recommended the sacking of Honorable Mayanja Nkanji, Honorable Chikaire, and Mr. Emmanuel Tumusime Mutebire for having politically failed to supervise the smooth divestiture of Uganda Commercial Bank? Mm, yeah, I'm very sorry about that because it, you know, this, this whole thing is, is a, a mixture of so many problems. But I hope justice will be on their side. 
Yeah, you also have interests in NHAS, I hope, and uh, they have, uh, the par parliamentary committee has also called for the disciplining of uh, Honorable John Nasasir and Sam Kutesa. Are you sorry about this? How did you get involved in, first of all, they say they helped the, f <laughs> the collapse of Uganda Airlines. No, that is not true. This thing was advertised in the newspapers. NHAS itself was falling apart like Uganda Airlines is falling apart. So, Civil Aviation advertised the, uh, the, 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 the agency. We took it up, bidded, evaluated, and we got the, the NHAS. Yes, listeners, the time is uh, 8.30 p.m. East African time, and uh, we are hosting Major General Salim Saleh. The lines are now open. You can ring us on telephone number 257254 or 348 one nine six and uh, the major general will be able to answer any of your questions especially on the report just released by the parliamentary committee on the privatization process. yes uh, major general can you tell us how much did you give to westmont buying ucd no that's a company issue greenland investments will issue a statement on that yeah. Yeah. okay listeners you can now ring two five seven two five four we can now entertain any of your questions. Now, Major General, uh, why have you resigned as Senior Presidential Advisor on Defense and Security? Because I abused the confidence the President put in me. Do you regret? Yeah, I, reg I, I regret leaving him alone, but I had no choice. Yeah, some people have been arguing that you should have gone on since you apologized. That has, that would, you know, it's, it is, uh, it is, uh, I think it, it was in order for me to resign because apart from having not been able to, to yeah. apart, apart yeah, I think we shall be coming to that one. Let's first get this call on the line. Hello? Yes, please. Fine, how are you? Yes. Yes. I only thank Major Salim Saleh if he decided to protect the interest of the Ugandan. Uganda to take away Uganda Commercial Bank Uganda Commercial Bank. I don't have any question to him but I thank him for what he did. Yes. Uh, what is your reaction to that message? Yes, yes. We've, we've yeah we've got you. Thank you very much. Uh, what do you mean by doing the same? What do you mean by doing the same? Protect our interest uh, by by buying the uh, the, the, the companies we have here in Uganda. Okay. Instead of foreign investors to buy them. Yes, the major general is going to answer you. Uh, what is your reaction to Mr. Kagwa's suggestion? Well, well, I don't know. I don't, it's he's in line with my thinking. So what can I say? It's good. Yeah, we have another call on the line. Let's first let him. Hello. <laughs> Hello there. Hello. 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 Can we have your name, please? Yeah, I'm called Diego. I'm calling from Namasuba. You're called who? Diego. Diego. Yeah, and I'm calling from Namasuba. Okay, go ahead. Uh, my question goes to uh, Major General Salim Saleh, and it's about why he chose to purchase the UCB under clandestine arrangement, considering that in his own views, it was a very noble objective. He wanted to extend uh, credit maybe to those who were poor. And then on the other side... Let me answer first. Let me first answer that first question. It, I did it because I was denied the chance in the first place. Okay, so you got... About uh, Major General Salim Saleh buying UCP, is it a problem of Major Salim Saleh it's a, a problem of, of waste mount. That's the question I would like to know. Because what I know is Major General Salim Saleh has no personal contract with the privatization unit, but he rather had his own arrangement with waste mount limited. Therefore, in this case, is it a problem of uh, Major General Salim Saleh or is it a problem of uh, waste mount? What I would believe is that he has a problem by the mere fact that he lied on oath when he appeared before the parliamentary committee, and then maybe on the other side... Listen, listen, listen. 
I was not I was not under oath. No, 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 no. That's the wrong information. I was never under oath. Major General Salim Saleh, let's have this point very clear. Did you take the oath no. before you appeared? No, I didn't. When you appeared before the parliamentary committee? I didn't take an oath. Because they are saying parliament acts like a high court, especially when those committees are in session. Yeah. And uh, all we know of parliamentary procedure and court procedure is that you take oath before you give evidence. That's right. Did That's you take the oath? But the tapes are there. You go and check them. I never took any oath. So you never saw it? No. Yeah, listen, as we're hosting Major General Salim Saleh, in case you have any question, ring 257-254 or 348-196. Right now we have a call on the line. Hello? Yes, please. And it surprises me so much to see that one gentleman is having money for which is supposed to be shared among hundreds of Ugandans. Can he give me guidelines of how to get money? Because I'm also a soldier who fought with him. He knows me very well. Can he give me the guidelines of how he got that money, which is in billions and billions of money? Okay, yeah, he's going to answer you. Uh, it depends on the projects that you have. If you have any project, you come and we discuss it. Yeah, I think Mr. He is, is asking what tricks do you use? Huh? <laughs> well, well, the financial engineering, I think. Projects, yeah, projects. Just bring projects and we discuss them and see whether we can do it. Because he says he fought with you. And Fine. He, you have billions of billions of shillings. Then, and for him, he's still uh, a pauper. Well, that's unfortunate, but I don't know what to do about it. Yeah, we have another call on the line. Hello? 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 Yes, please. Give us your name. Yes. I have no problem with uh, Mr. Salim Saleh anyway. Yes. And I thank him very much for what he did for buying UCP anyway for Uganda needs. Mm. Yeah. All right. Maybe Sabriva should be informed that uh, the Major General Salim Saleh has pulled out of the deal. You know, he has pulled yes. out of the deal. Do you advise him to go for it again? reaction, Major General? Somebody says you should continue with the, the purchase of UCB. Well, if I get the authority, I'll do that. No problem. Yeah. Well, as I said before, the problem is not trying to acquire UCB. It's what I did against orders. Yeah. We have another call on the line. Hello? Ah, yes, please. Good evening to you. Yeah, I would like to ask the Major General one question. Who are you? I'm James. James Connery? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Now, James is calling from where? Now, Mr. General, uh, you said you disobeyed the, 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 the chief of staff. Uh, you mean to say uh, he knew exactly uh, what you were doing and he was keeping quiet while the parliament was wasting time making this unnecessary inquiry? So. No, he, he well, when the deal was, was starting, I, I, I had to ask his authority. And since he stopped me from doing, from going ahead with the deal, he assumed that actually I didn't go ahead with the deal. And up to now, he has been wondering whether what the people are saying is true or not. Because after he stopped me, then he, he thought that I had left UCB alone. Yes, listeners, uh, the, we are tonight news hour. News hour tonight is hosting Major General Salim Saleh. And uh, in case you have any question, you can ring... Two five seven two five four or three four eight one nine six. Let's have a break of your questions. Right now we have a call on the line. Hello. Yes, please. Um, called Simon Duwama. Yes. I'm bringing it from Mengo. From Mengo. Yes, please. Okay. Um, uh, one thing I want uh, to Mr. Salim say to assure the nation is that uh, one lie leads to another. Since the Mr. the Major General lied to the parliamentary committee, I can see that he's continuing to lie. I can't see unless someone is supernatural. I can't see someone accumulating such billions and billions of shillings in very short time where people have fed for almost for life. Thank you. Yeah, it's going to answer you. Well, in the immediate future, since you are putting me under pressure, 
I'm going to announce a scheme that could make all of us rich if we take it seriously. So I would request that on another occasion I'm allowed to to announce a scheme that could make people get money. Okay, we have another call on the line. Hello? 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 Yes, please. Uh, my name is Nava Nawagetera. Yes, please. I just want to go one song, a fan That is the deputy speaker, Kampala. Yes, please. Okay. This is the Mrs. Uh, Sebagara. Yes. Good. Okay. First of all, I want to thank him very much for being transparent. I want to thank him for being very civilized because very few people can say sorry when they've done something wrong. We have seen very few people resign when they've done something wrong in Uganda. I'm sure he has set a very good precedent. And I think there is nothing wrong with him making money because, of course, not all of us can be equal. I'm a lawyer, but not all lawyers are successful. So if maybe Katende Sebe was successful, that's not his fault. So even if Afande Sali is successful, that's not his fault. But he's thinking about Ugandans. And I think we should give the devil his due. We should give credit where it's due. I give him credit. I salute him. Please keep it up. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Major General Salim Sale, uh, there are quite a number of people who are ringing in support of your position. What is your comment on this? Well, I don't know how to comment about it. Maybe they are as right as I am or as wrong as I am. I, I can't, I don't know. But a caller earlier before Mrs. Uh, Sebagala said that one lie leads to another, mm. that you told the parliament a lie and you are continuing to lie to, to Ugandans. What concrete comment do you have on that one? Well, that is really... That's a problem that I can't define now. Because now, you see, it was the coming out with that statement that I came up with. Mm. Yeah, I, d I didn't lie under oath. Yeah. That's the most important. Listen. Yeah. Um, we had a big argument in Greenland Investments, whether to disclose or not to disclose. And I was uh, hands tied, so until I, have, I realized that this was taking dangerous proportions, and, and we, we, I came out. Yeah, let's first have so this it call. Could be, it could easily be a mistake, I don't know, I don't know, but yes, we shall have to wait. Yeah, we can maybe come to that one. Maybe we shall be coming back to that one. Let's first have this call. Hello? Hello? Yes, please. Yeah, I'm calling from uh, Who are you? Me, I'm Yes. Um, I have no question. Yes. I'm only trying to help Salim Saleh to answer one funny question. Yes. That what magic do you use to make money? So fast. But uh, I want to remind the callers, those ones who are queries, that this way in the who built these Goropas in Kampala started the business in Uganda very recently. Some of us who started the history know that there were Asian coolies ruled by the British to build the railway. Very fast, they made money and built the Goropas in Kampala. So they built it. Now, what magic do you expect Sale to, to use to make money in a short time? It's the same magic that the Asians use. A matter of planning and hard work. Thank you. Yes. So what is your comment about that? Major General Salim Sale, do you have some Asianic blood in you? <laughs> <laughs> the gentleman is equating your business acumen to the Asians who came building the railway and later built Golofas in Kampala? No, but I think if I'm allowed really to explain, I don't know. This, If I get off this case, for instance, I, I'm going to devote all my energy to maybe advising people on how to make money, if I, if, if I can pass this one. Yeah. Because I had already decided to do that. I have got projects at hand that are there, like this one. I tried to forward it to the donors today. And the Minister of Finance refused me. So what could I do? Yeah, we shall be coming to this one, which uh, the Minister so of the, the, But there is, so there, is there is the magic, the magic. It's, there is no the magic. Look here. In order to change the situation in Uguru, f read this one. It's completely analyzed, researched, and it's there. Okay. Let's first have this call on the line. But uh, first of all, before the caller comes, Major General Salim Sali, you are more obsessed with Guru. You are not talking about your home village. My dear, you have not been to Guru to see the situation there. That's your problem. You are in Radio Uganda here, you have not been to Guru. I've not been to Guru villages, I've been to Guru town. Mm, the, the, that's no difference from... It's like being in the studio here and, and in the phone. <laughs> mm, let's get this call on the line. Hello? Yes, please. It is from Mutonwe. Go ahead. 
another one suggests whether uh, Major General Salim Sare will be arrested. But this man is a freedom fighter. How can the MP suggest him to be arrested when he's almost the one who led them to this uh, to become MPs? What do you mean by that? Okay. <laughs> Major General, do you have a comment about that? No, let's take another question. Okay, let's get this call another. Hello? Yes, please. Good evening to you. Y yes, please. So long as the Major General can understand you. Yes? Yes. Tandi, can I hear you? Mavis Mata. Right, go ahead. Hey. Mm. I'm still debating with myself because uh, I, I don't know whether to go for mature entrance to the, at the university or to go for or to jump S5. If I jump S5, they will say it is corruption, so <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> and if I get eight Ds, they will say it's corruption, so it's, it's just uh, unbelievable. Hmm. Luanji? Mm. Ah, che, chari chabu sungwe chunja kusiga la wano. Mm. D. Eh. Mm. Nchiko ze kati. Yeah. Major General, umchala gamba, ayagala wetu onde. Mm. Tito cha genze, wekiza ilumu Amerika. Nja kuchikolo wache na ayamba. Ogena mbwanga nguse? Neda, yeah. nja kuetu onde wache na ayamba. Hii, anti agama, anti wetu onde, publicly. Oh. <laughs> na ya anti mwe viti lida nawe vikule manola wa nga, nga viti lida okuati mwobu sungu. Ok, let's get this call on the line. Hello? Yes, please. Let's get this other call. Hello? Hello? Yes, please. Good evening to you. Yeah, I want to... Uh, I want, I want, uh, Who are you? Yeah? Who are you? I'm Tinka from Colorado. Okay. I want to the Major General to actually maybe tell us the criteria under which somebody who has made more than one uh, financially can get a uh, prerogative of massive No, I, I'm not the answering authority on that. I don't appoint myself. I can't dismiss myself. So why, what is he asking me? You wanted to know how one can be forgiven. I don't know. For me, I asked and I'm forgiven. So what's the question? Okay, let's get this call on the line. Hello? Hello? Yes, please. Hello, how are you? Fine, how are you? My name is Laura. Hello. Yes. I just want to say hello to Mr. Salim Saleh. Okay. And, uh, well, the whole thing is... I can't stand the problem with doing business anyway in your own country. Yes. Yeah. Is that all, Nora? Um, I just wish him luck. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 
maybe Major General Salim Saleh, if I can put the question, by, by your actions in Uganda Commercial Bank, by your clandestine involvement, did you cause any financial loss to government or to the bank? You see, after after de- doing what we did, I left for Guru. I came back uh, end of August, hmm? or begin end of August, no beginning of August. Then, and I didn't. I have not even been to the bank myself. I left it entirely in the hands of Greenland Investment. Oh no, on the management of of those who are managing. Yeah, let's first get this call on the line. Hello? Yes, please. Yes. Mm, okay, that's yeah. a comment. Thank yeah, you. I don't think Yes. Yeah. Okay, listeners, we're on 257254 and uh, tonight's news hour, uh, news hour special edition is hosting Major General Salim Saleh. You can ring 257254 or 348196. Right now we have a call on the line. Hello? Yes, please. Hello? Hello? Uh, you online? Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, this question goes to Salim Saleh. Uh, let me repeat it again. He has to mention that uh, the president is against his business and that he has no interest in his Doesn't it that uh, it, it is based on the reported earlier in the press that uh, he appointed his excellent son to be the general manager of Caleb International. Uh, what does he think about the public's opinion? Thank you. Okay. Going to yeah, but what's wrong with that? He, apart from being the son of the president, he's my nephew. So what is the problem there? Yeah, this is okay. Let's get this call on the line. Hello? Yes, please. Wakita, yes? Yeah, I want to know from Salim Saleh. Mr. Salim Saleh, uh, up to now, do you know that you're a thief? Two, do you believe that you like the, the public and the parliament? Three, do you know that you have lost the confidence that people had in you? Four, do you know that you caused movement uh, uh, more of uh, the, unpopular, the, the unpopularity than the good? Yes, can you substantiate, please? What do you mean by that? Yeah, one, one thing is that you lied that you were not buying the commercial bank. And now you are coming up that you actually bought it through Greenland Bank. That is the trick of every, every thief. <laughs> <laughs> you are entitled to your own opinion, Mr. Wak- Wakeda. Wakeda. But I don't regard myself as a thief. No, not at all. If if all people if all thieves could behave like me, then they, we would be in a, in heaven together. Yeah, let's get this other call on the line. Hello. Yes, please. That it's 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 very difficult for me to answer that, but uh, time will tell us whether I'm lying now or not. Yes, listeners, we are hosting Major General Salim Saleh live in a live talk show uh, in on Radio Uganda's News Hour. Uh, right now, we have a call on the line. Hello. Hello there. Hello. 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 Yes, please. Yes, capture, okay. Yes, please. Uh, I would do. I am wondering why some people are saying that I'm in support of the Major General and they are not giving us what they are supporting him for. Secondly, I want to inquire from the Major General now that he has resigned. Is he going to exile as he promised us? Thirdly, in the beginning, they denied all the involvement in the UCP saga. And now he is coming out to tell us that he was wrong. What made him change his mind? Thank you. 
Yes, the major general is going to answer. Which one should I answer now? Which one? He, he says. Uh, I think start with the second. Which is what? It makes more sense. The second question is what? Is he still on the line? Uh, he has gone off the line. Well, I didn't catch the second question. Uh, let's uh, let's get this call and then hello. Yes, please. Fine, how are you? He's going to answer you. Yeah, because I think the president is worried about his relationship with me. That seems to be a very big problem. And uh, also, I think um, he just didn't think that it was wise for me to get involved in, in, in UCB. Uh, and I don't think he supports all the companies being taken by foreigners. I think the only problem is that sometimes the Africans themselves or Ugandan themselves are not organized enough to take up the bids. Yes, we have another call on the line. Hello? Yes, please. First of all, I think we have capacity to organize ourselves and buy these enterprises. Only we don't have, we lack the awareness. And uh, number two, since this case has come up, I would request that it shouldn't stop the process of privatization. Or, although people call it ugly and dishonest and whatever, whatever the case may be, the privatization process should go on and then they could improve improve on the on the on the evaluations of companies that are bidding for our 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 parastatos. Yeah I think we should have a last caller. Hello? Hello? Yes please. Good evening, Good evening. Good evening to you. Yes. Major Salim. Major Salim Salim. Yes. Hey. Mm. Nasgaza Ubram Bwangi, Nasgaza business is going at advanced civil doors and Jacu in Jacuganda Mass. All right, uh, in relation to what uh, that lady has just uh, said, Major General Salim Saleh, uh, where do you leave the UPDF? No, the UPDF is in safe hands, I can assure you. Do you think the president is going to get a competent and reliable officer like you? Sure, there are many of them. Yeah, uh, as we conclude, what can be done to end the internal rebellions in the country? We have the Konya Rebellion, we have the ADF, and so on. I have my own philosophy, although it's not shared by many people. I think poverty is one of the causes of insecurity in this country. So if we could address poverty, I think most of the rebellions would end. This is my own view, although it's not shared by many people. Yeah, maybe lastly... Uh, could you tell us what has been or is your personal involvement as a military officer in the Democratic Republic of Congo? 
originally I was in touch with President Kabila and I was trying to do business there. And now, up to, I think, Friday, I was uh, presidential advisor in that affair. <laughs> and uh, maybe before we wind up, Major General, now that you have resigned all your, all your titles, the of senior presidential advisor, like the lady says, what are you going to do with yourself? Because business, you, you are, business, you are business. more involved, I think your life is much more <coughs> of military than business. No, 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 I'm going to change my style completely. Hey. Yes. So we are going to see you more in this, uh, in Chikubo than... Uh, no, 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 I can't be in Chikubo. I'm, I'm going to do, if if God allows, I, I'm going to be doing bigger business than Chikubo. Yes, listeners, we come to the end of tonight's special edition of News Hour in which you heard Major General Salim Saleh. I am Samuel Pimbaza Hashaka. On behalf of my co-presenter Samuel Mwanguzi, uh, the producer Charles Mutambuze, and the technician Akankunda. Good night to you all. Thank you.